Hey, what's up everybody? Dobie Masters here. And today I'm coming to you with a unique but fun little tutorial, and that's gonna be how to create a target in Adobe Premiere Pro. So if we raise the opacity of this, you'll see what we've created here. And we haven't imported this asset, we've actually created it all within Premiere. And we can do a multitude of different things with something like this. Like in this situation, we can target like, you know, something that we're talking about, maybe in a documentary, just to sort of draw the eyes towards the target. Or for example, we can change the color of it by just using the hue right here. If you're doing video game videos, you could track the target, you know, to show a, a, a neat snipe or something like that. So this is what we're gonna be creating today. Just a little fun tutorial to show you some things that you can do with the graphics tab and how you can have some fun with it. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is just have our footage and then have basically an empty sequence or a sequence that you want to work with. We're then going to go up to our tool panel right here. We're gonna go over, click on it so that it extends out and it shows a bunch of different tools. So if you click on it once, it won't do it. You have to click and hold for just a little while. And then you have the option to go to pen tool, rectangle, or ellipse. We're gonna go with ellipse and then we're gonna drag out a circle. Now, how do you get a perfect circle? All you have to do is hold down the shift key and it'll make it a perfect circle. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a circle, however big we want, we can scale it up or down later. So make it as big as you need so that you can um, work and actually create the target. So I'm actually gonna make it a touch bigger than this, right about there. So then we can go over here to the align and transform. So make sure you open up your essential graphics panel, go to the edit, click on the shape, then down into the align and transform vertical center and horizontal center just to make sure that it's centered within the composition. Next thing we need to do is we need to take this, which is the anchor point, and we need to drag that centered as well. The reason that we centered the circle originally is because whenever we want to center this anchor point, it's actually going to snap with us with these lines to the very center of the sequence. So if the circle's already centered, when we snap here, we're guaranteed that the anchor point will also be centered to the center of the circle. The reason that this is important is because whenever we duplicate this and we shrink it down, we want it shrinking on the circle, the, on the center, and not on something like the top left or the left side of the screen or something like that. We can rename these as well. So I can rename this to like outer layer. Uh, this will just help if you need to make edits later so you know which layer is which. We wanna go ahead and go with whatever color we wanna start with. So I'm just gonna go with a strong red to be our base. We're then going to go to the Essential Graphics panel, click on that outer layer and hit Control C, Control V, and that's going to go ahead and copy and paste uh, a duplicate. You can also right click and hit duplicate right there. So we're then going to just name this one just second layer and just we'll name those like this as we go on farther and farther. We then go to the left side over here. You can use the scale on the right as well, but I like to use the one over in the effect controls. So open up the effect control panel wherever it may be then go find your new layer tab. So it's gonna be the second layer tab that we want to affect. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change the fill to our color so we can see what we're doing. So I'm going to just change it to white. Then we're going to go into the transform property of our second layer and scale this down. So we're just gonna scale it down to something that we think looks good. I mean, if you wanna spend a lot of time, you can scale it to like this and make a whole bunch of these, or you can scale a little bit bigger and make less of them. So I'm gonna make it right about there. We're then going to just go to the second layer, right click on it, hit duplicate again or control C V, rename it to instead of second, we're just gonna go with third. Go over to the left side, find our third layer. And then when we go to the fill this time, we can do two things. We can click on it or we can just use this eyedropper and just grab the, the original outside color here. Uh, if we click on it, we can use the eyedropper in the bottom right to do that. But the eyedropper right here will just make that a little bit quicker of a task scale this down once more, just sort of, I like to just eyeball it. Uh, you could do math to make it work, but I mean, it's math with circles, so it's gonna be a decently complex. So I like to just sort of eyeball to see how close it is, and I think that looks pretty good. So then again, repeat the process, rename, fourth, fill, click that white, go to the scale, scale it down. Oh, that's the third layer. We want to go to the fourth layer, fill that to white, scale it down. And then it looks like we're gonna need just one more, so we're gonna go ahead and do that again. Right click, rename, and you can see that we can do this pretty quickly. And once we create this, we can actually save it as a layer and then never have to create it again. Fifth layer, grab red, and then just going to go to the transform. 
and down to the scale to make our final bullseye. And so there we go, we've created the initial target. Uh, and now it's looking pretty good. It looks like any icon target that you could uh, find online. So now we can actually add different little effects to this to sort of have some fun with it. A really good effect to add to it is, so we can just drag this onto the graphic layer as a whole, is basic 3D. So if we go into our effects down in video effects perspective, basic 3D, we can actually do 3D stuff with this now. So we can swivel it around in space, as you can see, just like so, or we can tilt it backwards or up or down. And this allows you to sort of fit a surface. So if we wanna swivel it, like let's say we wanna fit right here, we can do it like so, roads maybe slightly more tilted there. And then we can either, we can then use the distance to sort of grab a certain point. And then if we use our position for the entire, uh, the entire graphic layer, we can sort of just move this wherever we want. And then we can use the scale to bring it in uh, with an animation. So for example, we could start at zero, go maybe that far forward, bring it up. And then if you bring it up just a slightly larger than you want it and just move forward two frames and then bring it down to where you want it, it gives a nice little pop effect when it comes in. And then you're gonna have to work with those keyframes because that doesn't look too good as of right now. Maybe bring those in some. Yeah, that's looking a little bit better. And then I like to just drop the opacity down so that it sort of fits in the scene a little bit better. Something else that you can do is you can go over here and you can look for uh, down in the video effects color correction, you can look for the color balance. If you drag and drop that on, you can actually change the colors of this at, at a whim. Just spin the hue wheel. Let's go bring this opacity back up to 100. You can spin the hue wheel here and you'll actually be able to control whatever to whatever color you want it to be. Uh, that way you don't have to rebuild it in a bunch of different colors. You can just spin the hue wheel, find what color you want, and then you're good to go. And then of course, you can use something like the transform effect uh, under video effects, distort and transform. And this will allow you to, if you add motion to it, so if we start it, uh, when you use a position, if we start it over here and then move it across the screen, uh, go like two frames forward, move it across the screen. And then we go down and we uncheck this, bring up shutter angle. You can see we've created the motion blur in between these. If we extend this out, you'll see now we have this sort of motion blur as it goes across, you can sort of make it look and fit to your scene. Anyway, that's how you can create a target in Premiere Pro using the graphics panel alone. And then you can drop all these different effects like basic 3D transform or color balance to a to sort of manipulate this into whatever you want it to be. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below on our website at adobemasters.net. If you wanna see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and that subscribe button and make a video every other day on Adobe related products. And until next time guys, see ya.